Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and do our last segment of the day. We always end with what's new and bring you up to date on all of the uh, new initiatives, services, technology that we're working on. Um, and let me say that it is an absolute pleasure to come to work with these three extraordinary people every, well, not every day. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a pleasure to come to work every day that we work. <laughs> But even we don't work every day. <laughs> um, and, um, and I am really, 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 really lucky, you know, but you're even luckier uh, to, have, to have their work. Uh, it's truly extraordinary. I don't know of a stronger team in our business. You see a lot of, Austin, you see lots of teams and lots of companies. Uh, there may be, um, there are undoubtedly, some very, very strong teams, but I think this is one of the strongest teams, and it, it, is, it takes teamwork. What we do takes a team. It really, really does. As I said in my introduction, we're a long way from me working out of my home office. <laughs> uh, thank, 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 thank goodness. <laughs> uh, although I wouldn't have traded that for, for anything. Uh, so um, thank you, all three of you. I'm going to thank you now uh, rather than at the end. Um, and then uh, J.C., Catherine, and Casey will all uh, um, take a turn during this presentation presenting their area of things. Oh, I need the, uh, okay. that, it's up there. It's oh, here the it is, okay, all right. And this, this thing's working still. Okay, so just to remind people, we have a whole bunch of services, and the reason I go through this every year is because maybe this is the year where you say, oh, now I need that, or whatever it is. Uh, um, what we just did it was an example of ProNet, our database of professionals. And Tanya and Kevin are both in that database. And if you feel like you may need uh, a professional like them, we keep a full database of that that's accessible through NCM 360. Uh, Next Gen, we've been doing a lot on. If you have young people in your lives, um, we, JC and I have been doing a lot of meetings because we recognize if you've got um, I don't even want to say problems, but if you've got young people uh, who are just uh, starting out uh, in their financial lives, which really occurs in their 20s, you know, let's say after college, but even before then, um, we're having a really, I think, good beneficial effect, having some early conversations with those young people. Um, I've got two kids, and it is not real easy for me to talk with them about money because I'm their parent. <laughs> And uh, they don't want to hear it from me. Uh, but what we're finding is that um, uh, adult children hearing things from us, it's easier. Uh, the medicine kind of goes down more easily. And, and then they also have another voice that they can talk to that's not their parents. And so um, we have an initial, Zoom, usually at Zoom, because they're usually in a different place, different city, and we talk with them. and and find out where they're at. And I can just say that at the end of those meetings, uh, JC, I don't think we've ever had anything other than just some really, really happy young adults who, who feel like it was well worth their time. And parents love it. Parents love it. They're like, thank you. I can't talk to them. Uh, <laughs> they quit listening to me you know, years ago. Um, NCM 360 will be talking about more about how we've made enhancements and we're making lots and lots of enhancements. Uh, the New Capital Journal, uh, you know, we were doing it weekly and I decided really just a month or so ago with Catherine, we're going to cut back to monthly. Uh, we think we can make a stronger monthly issue than weekly. Uh, she and I were having editorial meetings where there were times we felt like, well, I don't know, nothing here really strikes us as something we want to put before people. Um, and so, uh, so it's gone monthly, but we're going to still continue to send it out to everybody. Um, I had questions about this today. So we've been doing this a few times a year. I have uh, a background in meditation, and um, we've done, what, three of these sessions? 30-minute sessions at noon through Zoom uh, where I do a guided meditation uh, to try to get uh, people on that program to think in a more positive way about money. 
um, where really it's about developing a, a positive mindset and a positive relationship with money and, and having less of a scarcity mentality and more of a, a, a fullness mentality. And it's just a 30-minute thing that we do uh, just to remind people that they're quarterly webinars. We're still doing our quarterly rep webinars where I'll put slides up and show you what's going on in the markets, very similar to what I did this morning. And then we've got a whole bunch of outsourced services. With all due respect to Kevin and to Tanya, there is a company called Trust and Will that has a pretty good online uh, uh, um, service for producing some estate documents. I don't recommend it as the, uh, as the um, thing that you would use, uh, but if you do have a quick need and you've got a college-age kid who's somewhere else, it's a, it's a good quick way to do something, and we did that with Abby. Uh, Pontera, if you have a 401k and you want us to manage your 401k while you're still working, we can do that uh, with this uh, service we have through Pontera. Um, if you have a business and you want to put in place a 401k, we, have, we use the guideline 401k. We like it a lot. Very inexpensive. Uh, and very good um, low-cost investment funds uh, from the likes of DFA and Vanguard. Ra you know, so, so the funds themselves are 30 basis points rather than 80 basis points, and that, that savings adds up over time. Um, we are doing quite a lot in the area of insurance. DPL is a network, and um, we are really helping people kind of pull all their insurance documents together under our co-management along with DPL. Uh, so if you have existing insurance policies that you want to put under our care, we will do that along with DPL so you get the benefit of our advisory on it and their ability to transact insurance policies. Um, and they can also make proposals regarding life insurance or long-term care insurance. Other, other types, uh, JC? Annuities. Annuities. So not property and casualty insurance, but, but uh, financial insurance related things. Medicare back office uh, is a group that we turn to to help our clients make decisions about Medicare. So if you're in that place, whether you're moving toward it or you have it already and you've got questions and you need help, uh, we like them. They, 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 we're, we're not Medicare experts, but they are. Um, Von Tobel is our Swiss bank. Uh, and... Um, I've gotten a lot of questions lately about, you know, what happens if things continue to worsen on the political scene. And all I can say is if you want an, if you want an account in Switzerland, you can have it. I have one uh, just because I, uh, just cause I um, you know, I want to eat, eat my own cooking. We have another client or two who've done this. I'm not telling you to do it, and it is not free. It's got about a $3,000 a year minimum to hold the account. But remember that you're getting paid interest now. Right, so, right when we were back at zero percent interest rates, it wasn't anything. You could put a you know whatever million dollars in cash there now, or half a million dollars in cash there, and they're charging about 0.3 percent. So if you're getting paid five percent, you know, and the charge by the bank to hold the account is 0.3 percent, then that's that's uh, you know pretty small in comparison. Uh, but but I don't know of any other firm that offers this. Uh, so and the other thing is that we can hold in custody in Switzerland the portfolio that we hold for you here at Fidelity. Same securities. And so we don't have to go through any sort of portfolio changeover. Uh, we can hold exactly your portfolio in Switzerland if, you want, if you're interested in that. Um, and then Strata Trust is for um, non-traditional uh, self-directed IRA. So if you want to use your IRA to invest in real estate or, or a venture capital startup company, or some sort of real estate LLC or some oil and gas thing. I'm not telling you to do those things, <laughs> but, uh, but um, if you do, then we have a way to, to do that. And some people avail themselves of that. Most people don't, that's fine, but, uh, but that's that. So, all right, um, we've attended some conferences this year, bring you up to date on that, DFA study groups. Uh, and I wanna just mention that JC uh, was um, this year, right, earlier this year, invited to join one of DFA's study groups. Austin, I think these are pretty prestigious things, you know? I mean, it's, uh, um, I've been part of one that I was invited by DFA to join several years ago. And, um, you know, you're invited to join, I don't, they don't just invite every, anybody. And, 
and so you have to be a pretty, pretty strong advisor, a pretty strong professional to be invited to join these groups. And JC was invited to join one, a younger group. So yes, please round of applause. And that, that really tells you really what a superstar she is in this industry, and she is. Um, uh, we attended a J.P. Morgan fixed income conference. I told you that was the one where I got steak, and, uh, and that was an interesting one. Um, and then uh, we've been on lots of webinars, uh, market updates from, from groups that we work with, healthcare and insurance, uh, Roth conversions, other advanced planning topics. We're on these things all the time as we make sure that our knowledge is staying up with changes in laws and changes in regulations uh, and changes in innovation as these things occur. Um, okay, IPS stands for Investment Policy Statement. We're gonna pass this out. JC and I have been working for a long time on an investment policy statement. And so we're giving you a sample. This isn't your IPS, but we're giving you a sample of a document that at some point all clients will have it's a detailed discussion of your portfolio and our approach to it. And, and um, um, we had a lot of challenges. We needed to make sure we had a system where we could generate it for 100 different households. And then uh, the provider, which is Orion, they bought a company called Hidden Levers. And they added this capability for us to be able to design our own report out of it. But then there were lots of bugs in it. And so JC and I have gone through bug after bug after bug, and a lot of it were stupid bugs. It wasn't even like, you know, the numbers were wrong. It was it didn't let us put the title of the chapter on top of the chapter. You know, we were like, well, that should take you guys a few seconds to, to fix that, uh, but it didn't. But we are now at the point where we will be generating an investment policy statement for each household. It's gonna take us over a year to sort of slipstream it. Our goal is about, um, it's going to be for all clients and, and uh, one-year implementation. It's just an additional document uh, for you to have and you to be able to turn to uh, so that you can see what your portfolio is about. It shows you some stress testing, so it shows you, you know, in the worst, perform worst time period for the port, here's just an example, worst time period for the portfolio over the last 10 years, what was the biggest drawdown? You know, we want you to know that. We don't want you to be surprised if the market goes down and your portfolio goes down and you say, well, I didn't know it could go down. We want you to make sure you see that that's there. And if that number is too much for you, then we can move you to a different portfolio. That's just one example of many pages in the investment policy statement. Okay, JC's gonna talk about uh, some year-end stuff for everybody. All right, so just some um, year-end planning reminders, um, some tax loss harvesting opportunities. This will mainly be Leonard and I looking at portfolios to see if there are any tax loss harvesting opportunities, probably maybe a little left in the bond portfolios that we'll take care of for the end of the year. Uh, we have charitable contributions, especially if you have a donor advised fund. Um, now would be a good time to replenish those and get the tax deduction for tax year 2023. Let me say one thing about that. We know there are a lot, a lot of problems in the world, and we're so sorry about it. Uh, last night, the news coming out of Lewiston, Maine, my son and I were there just a few months ago looking at Bates College, and it's a heartbreaking thing to see. So we all know there are terrible problems, and one of the biggest ways that we can make change in the world is with our money. This is where we at New Capital are in a position to be able to help, help you. Uh, do that. So if there are organizations, causes, whatever it is, uh, please let us know how we can help you, whether that's uh, through a charitable donor advised fund, we do a tremendous amount with Fidelity, whether it's a direct grant of cash or stocks, uh, we can uh, process all of that. Casey is expert at that and can, and can help you. So I just, I just want to say that. We can forget that uh, you know, any amount of money to some cause that is dear to you helps. We can feel powerless about it. Um, I had a client who was in very, very angry about the political, angry about the political situation in the country several months ago, and I said, why don't you just give $25 a month to, what, to whatever it was, so you can at least wake up and not feel angry. You can wake up and feel like, I'm giving some money. It's not the most money in the world, but at least lets you feel like you've got some power to change some things. So I just want to jump in on that. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. 
All right, Roth conversions. Um, this is also something that Len and I will take a look at. Usually if you have a dip in income one year, it might be a good opportunity to take advantage of a Roth conversion. So if you're interested in that, let us know and we'll run the analysis and models on that. Retirement plan contributions. If you're still working, make sure you're maxing out those 401ks and retirement plans before the end of the year as well. And then personal gifting uh, before the end of the year, the um, gift exclusion amount is $17,000 for 2023. And that's per person, per recipient. recipient. So if you're a couple, you can do up to $34,000 to um, a single recipient before having to file any gift tax uh, returns. And then open enrollment, this is both for if you're on a marketplace, health insurance plan, or Medicare. Um, now's a good time to review those policies and see if there's any changes you wanna make um, on any of your supplemental Medicare plans. Um, and again, Medicare back office can help evaluate those if you're interested. All right. Okay. Um, has anybody noticed that the, uh, uh, kind of hard to get CPAs these days. It can be difficult. That industry is really going through a tough period. Young people don't want to go, uh, don't want to go into. We've got retirements that are going on, resignations of young people who've gone into the industry. You're one of your best friends be, joined the industry and then said no thanks. Yeah. Um, young people don't like their lives getting sort of totally taken away from them uh, around tax time. Um, and there's burnout that occurs. Uh, there's a reduced talent pipeline, as I said. Young people are not really being attracted into this industry. And there are estimates, and there's been article really after article, Wall Street Journal and so on, um, about the problems that are going on in um, staffing in the accounting business, the tax preparation and accounting business. Uh, and so um, one of the things, uh, oh, and, and the estimates are that even as much as 20% of the population in the industry has experienced attrition. That's a huge amount. Twenty, think of 20% loss in that industry. So we are thinking that we might bring in in-house tax preparation professional to help our clients prepare their tax returns, but I don't want to do it if it's not of interest. Um, we, we, we for, especially for those of you who are retired, we see a lot of the activity. It's coming out of fidelity in the form of dividends and interest and so on. Um, we wouldn't, uh, it would be only for clients. We're not going to open up a CPA shop to the public. That's not of interest. So it's only a value added service to our clients. Um, it would be for personal returns. So if you have a business, unless it was a small business, we might do small business. I haven't decided about that and won't know for a while. Uh, but we're not going to do any audits. Um, and frankly, a lot of the CPAs now, what they say is, you know, we, we just want clients where they have a substantial business that goes along with their personal return. And the way they view it is the personal return is a loss leader. They want the, bi the bigger bucks that are made on business returns. And if you don't have that, you know, they, they, they almost don't want to work with you. And so that's where the, the profession is headed. And, and um, there are financial advisors who have been moving into this. Um, uh, other firms I've talked to have moved into it. Uh, several in particular I know of. Austin, I think you're saying, maybe, are you observing this at DFA that this is happening? Yeah, especially with the special needs system now that we've been having a program for the Yeah. So um, what we'd like is on the form that we're going to ask you, no, demand that you fill out <laughs> at the end of today is uh, just let us know if this is of interest. If nobody's interested in this, I'm not going to pursue it. We would only do it if we can do a really great job on it, really get a really great person. Um, and, and, uh, but the idea is that we would uh, complete your tax return, or do your, do your personal tax returns, your 1040 and associated documents. Len, uh, yes? Would this be part of helping us screen clients, or would this be an added cost? Oh, undoubtedly there would be an additional cost. I'm sure about that. But, you know, it would be, it would be in the realm of what, of what people uh, uh, pay for tax services. Yeah, for, for sure. We, we wouldn't do it for free because <laughs> I'm going to have to pay that person. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> if they do it for free, I might think about it, but I don't think they will. Uh, okay, I'm going to turn it over to Catherine now. Okay. Um, so you all have probably heard us talk about NCM 360. This is the third year at our conference that we've um, talk to clients and invited clients in to use the system. So um, 
it's a big part of my job is continuing development and, and uh, added enhancements every year of new, fu new features, um, new benefits, new reasons to get people in. A lot of people start using NCM 360 so they can get the reports, which we love. Um, and hopefully once you do your access session with myself and Casey, you'll be convinced that there's other reasons to be on as well. So a few of the new changes we've made. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it was, it was confusing me. So one of the things we have is in the data section of the system, we have over 40, I think it may be 45, we add every year, um, we've got over 40 different categories of data. Um, and, or, well, we're calling them areas now because um, the new benefit that we have added is categorizing these areas, um, or excuse me, sorting the different um, areas of data into categories. There we go, thank you. Um, and so what we mean by that is rather than have the large, big bulk of tabs up at the top that you may have seen before if you've used the system, they were sorted alphabetically, it was starting to get hard to say, okay, it's the sixth line down, fourth from the left, you know. Um, so what we've done is we sorted, the group, sorted them into categories and hopefully they're useful and um, more intuitive categories so you can find your data. So you'll see um, it also ended up with us kind of changing our navigation menu a little bit, which hopefully um, enforces that ease of use. Um, and so what you'll see is these expandable and collapsible categories. So um, back on the slide, you can see we've got relationships. So that's your members and your professionals, people who you have relationships with, you know, financial, which is gonna be accounts, any, any like financial data. Um, personal, which includes your careers, charities, um, your education, kind of health, health reports, health data, things like that. Um, activity is a lot of things that we're doing internally with New Cap in New Capital. So um, meetings, uh, tasks, things of that nature. Here's where you're, you'll find your reports. Um, and then, and so on, you know, property is more real property. Legal is gonna be your contracts, entities, estate documents, things of that nature. So um, let me switch back over to the slides. Um, really, the goal here was uh, ease of navigation, ease of ability to find what you're looking for. So um, we're excited about that. And I think that these, again, are your categories we've listed. And um, next, the, another big um, enhancement that we added this year was um, kind of an expansion of what used to be called just documents. Um, now we've called them attachments. Um, and the reason is, is now it's not just documents. You can add a link. So if you've got, it kind of started internally where we were, a lot of times it's a PDF or a file, a Word document that we want to attach to a record. Um, a lot of times we're using internally Google Docs or maybe there's a newspaper article that you want to include that's connected to a record. Um, also images. We had a, a client who uh, just got married last weekend. They sent us a few pictures of their wedding or of them on their wedding day. And so we connected those to their wedding as an event in the system. So you can connect images, you can connect links, and you can now connect documents to records. So they're called attachments now instead of documents. It's kind of expanded that functionality. Um, and that can be used in um, a number of different um, of these data areas. Um, you know, for uh, one of the ones we're kind of excited about is maintenance. Maintenance is um, records that are connected to either real estate, vehicles, or yeah. the other one. <laughs> and yeah. there I've we been go. adding a lot of those on the yeah. house side. <laughs> and so if you've got, you know, Leonard, Leonard's always my model case on using 360. If you've got a new um, hot water heater and you need to take a picture of that serial number, um, you can connect that image to your record so that you can um, easily access it. So. That's the idea, of course, as usual. Um, and uh, I loved that uh, Tanya was talking about um, sharing data and, and, and accessing your data. If you've got estate documents, if you've got powers of attorney, we want you to upload those to the system. Um, and so that would, be a rec uh, that would be a document connected to your estate record. Um, roles is a brand new feature we've got. Um, we kind of implemented it late summer and we're um, very excited about it. We're hoping that it adds a lot of use and functionality to some of these existing data areas. You're just looking at a whole lot of different kinds of roles of things that you can be titled with um, in, in areas that might affect your financial life. 
Um, what this allows you to do is uh, very clearly specify who is connected to a record um, and, and how are they connected to a record. Um, so I'll jump over real quick and give you some examples. So, so far, um, some of those include an estate record. So you've got a will and you need to designate uh, who is the beneficiary, who is the trustee, yeah, or well, I guess that would be for a trust, sorry. <laughs> a trustee would be connected to a, a, a trust, a beneficiary, a grantor of a trust, so. Executor of a will. Executor yeah. of a will, exactly. And so you're able to create roles that are connected to that record that indicate um, that level of detail about the different people who are associated with that record. Um, we have it for insurance, so who is the uh, insured, who is the beneficiary, um, and as well for entities, different titles of people. And these last two items here, succession ordering and interest ownership percentages, are allowing the succession ordering is you can um, clearly and very nuanced, detailed, <laughs> indicate who is primary, who is secondary. Um, if it goes on to sixth role, you can indicate that. So it's a, it's a way of um, indicating and labeling succession ordering of the different roles. You might have a um, you might have a trustee, and then you might have a secondary or successor. successor trustee. Thank you. Um, and then on interest ownership percentages, what that's allowing you to do is say you have um, six beneficiaries, but each beneficiary gets a different percentage um, that allows you to indicate what interest percentage they have in the different role. Um, so it's it's pretty it's pretty nuanced and detailed, but it's allowing you to add that level of distinction on your different records. And um, finally, so, so I have a number, I ha I ha we've had a lot of meetings with a lot of clients getting them onto the system. And when I have these calls, it kind of has really become clear over the calls as I'm talking to people, um, and it, it kind of also worked out time-wise with the years that we're talking about, new, uh, NCN 360, really kind of three big benefits um, to using the system. Like I said, a lot of people come in so that they can get access to the reports. But once they're there, and really the primary first key benefit that we created the system for was for organization. It's organization for you to keep your data in one place, um, easily accessible. Um, like Leonard has mentioned before, if you pull your phone up at your doctor's office, you can pull up your healthcare information. Um, you can pull up, you know, your estate document in the middle, wherever you need it, you know, so you can um, have that on your phone, you can have it on your laptop, so it's organization of your own information, it helps us for your information to be organized as well for planning purposes. Um, and then last year we talked about um, a collaboration tool. This is called Associate User Access, um, where again to Tanya and Kevin's point of being able to share your data with your trusted people in your life, this is how you can do that using the NCM 360 system. So instead of saying, there's a lock under the <laughs> in my pillow and I have to go find it in the lock in my closet, um, you can share access through NCM 360 to specific areas of data. Um, you get to choose what you share and what you don't share. Um, and so that's associate user access, which we talked about last year. And you're essentially creating a login for a trusted person in your life that can be a professional. Tanya actually asked if she could uh, peek at the access next week. I said, absolutely. We can. Um, share your data with your professionals or with your um, beneficiaries, your heirs, uh, trusted people in your life. Um, and then this, this year, 2023, um, we're really excited about this. I'm really excited about this. It's really kind of starting to become the third key benefit and we're gonna be really able to fully launch into in January, hopefully 2024. Um, and it's all about communication. So up until now, most of the use comes out of 360 with input. So you have to um, put stuff into the system. You have to put your data into the system. Um, our new feature that we're working on is uh, a communication system out of the system to you, um, where it's really proactive messaging. Um, and the goal is, is to be able to help all of us, help us internally, and to help you make sure nothing's slipping through the cracks, um, that we're able to take care of things that come up. Um, and so um, what that looks like, we said proactive messaging to help take care of important items that are happening in your life. A couple of examples of what that might look like. Say you are approaching 
Social Security eligibility or Medicare eligibility. You know, we do a really good job of remembering that for clients, but we are not fail, fall, <laughs> fail proof. So um, this is a system that would, uh, you know, 90 days before your 65th birthday Medicare. for Medicare, <laughs> 60 days before, 30 days before, the system is going to send us a message. It's also going to send you a message saying, don't forget, in 90 days, you need to make sure Part A is, uh, you're enrolled in Part A. Um, you know, um, Social Security, same thing. So it, they're, they're reminders that are coming out of the system. It's automation coming out of the system that's going to be proactively helping us and helping you make sure these things are taken care of as they get closer. Um, another example is if you have your data in the system, which Casey's going to talk to you about shortly, um, if your data is in the system, let's say you have a contract or a wallet record, which would be a driver's license or um, a passport or an insurance policy. If you've put those expiration dates in the system, you're going to uh, be able to get reminders on when those expiration dates are getting closer. So you can say your driver's license expires in 30 days or your utility provider, don't forget to check your rates because we know after you go off contract, they might jack your rates up. It'd be a good time to check um, to make sure you're getting the best rates. So the system will be able to send you reminders as those dates are approaching. And finally, kind of a big one that we're working on, we're excited about um, financial planning profiles. Um, everyone will get a profile. So all clients will have a financial planning profile. This also would be uh, possible for other members of your family as well. Um, and we'll be filling those out. And what that is, is um, there's gonna be annual items JC was talking about earlier. For example, um, charitable gifting, um, 529 contributions, um, Roth conversions, if that's applicable to you. So these, these will be items in your profile that are checked off that will help us bring, the, bring that back around and make sure that's resolved, uh, either on an annual basis um, or as needed. But the financial planning profiles will be helping us do that. So. Um, this is all features that are going to be coming out of the system, messaging you, staying in touch with you, keeping us on track, um, just to avoid anything falling through um, and keep, uh, keep that going. Mm -hmm. And let me just add, you know, um, uh, it was either Tanya or Kevin who said, well, I'd like you to, I think it was Kevin who said, I'd like you to review your power of attorney once a year. Mm -hmm. So we can program the system so that once a year it will say, time to review your powers of attorney or whatever, you know, you'll be able to set it to three years, whatever it is. And so the system is going to message us and message you. It'll come, we think you're either going to be able to say, send it to me through text message or send it to me through email, whatever, and the system's going to talk back. But of course, it can't say anything to you if we don't have mm -hmm. your information loaded in the system. And nobody else has this. Nobody. No, no one in our industry has this but us. And that's one of the things we love about it is, you know, as we do meetings with clients and somebody, I think, um, I, in fact, Sarah, it, she, it, did she head out? I feel like w she was one of the first people I did an access session with a few, uh, two years ago, and she was said, you know, all those categories, it's hard to, it's hard to see it. We're, we're developing this software, so um, if you have ideas when you're using it, we can, we can implement those changes. So that's something that we love about it, and we can continue adding value. Um, to the system as we go. Um, and so um, Casey's going to talk about data loading next. And um, really, we're hoping that, you know, we, we keep coming back to the three key benefits, you know, organization, collaboration, and communication. And we're hoping that, you know, the more benefits and, and features that we add, um, that it'll just continue becoming more and more obvious. This is an, this is an innovative system. We hope everyone uses it. Um, and um, Casey, we can bring you up to talk about getting your data into the system. <laughs> Great, thank you. Oh, thanks. Um, so just to start, I think Catherine put it perfectly and so did Leonard, is that we can't do anything, we can't help you, we can't notify you if there's nothing in the system to begin with. So um, data loading, we introduced it last year. Uh, one of the first things we mentioned was that it was going to be in three separate sessions based on all of these categories that we sorted into three separate sessions. It was going to be more of a quarterly meeting. Um, but we found that to really not be very effective. So now, moving forward, it's much more customized to each specific client household. And for the clients that have done 
data loading with me, uh, just from my perspective and the client perspective, that it's been a lot more beneficial. It has given clients a plan of what to work on if they do it on their own time. Uh, if there's stuff that I need to be doing for the client, it gives them a list of what to send me. So a much more customized and tailored approach has been a big change for us and I'm actually very, very happy that we made this change. And this gives us the opportunity, especially me, to go through each client's household's data beforehand and to come prepared for the meeting. Um, in the future, we hope to have a report to furnish to clients that are doing data loading with me so that you have something to take home to provide something tangible. Um, for our existing clients, we recommend that you take advantage of this. Uh, as they've said before and as I first mentioned, if there's nothing in the system, you can't take advantage of the system talking to you, reminding of you of things expiring. If you know that you're going to be eligible for something soon, if there's nothing in the system, you won't know. So um, we definitely recommend, strongly recommend that you take advantage of it if you're an existing client. For new clients, this will now be included in your new client onboarding meetings. So once you have gone through mutual commitment and signing, then data loading will be included in our data and technology meeting, which for our existing clients was last uh, called technology and communications. So it's more of a revamped process and excuse me, and system, and we're definitely very, very happy with the change. Um, again, you can do this in office with me. You can bring in a box of documents and put it on the conference room table or on my desk, um, or we can meet through Zoom. So it's based on personal preference, but either of those options are available. So the next thing is more of a reminder, but the month of October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So I feel definitely with the amount of calls that we've gotten this year of just talking about data breaches and something somebody hacked into my email that it was important that we talk about this this year and the things I'm going to go over are really the four big areas that are what you would consider best practices or things that you need to remember when approaching cybersecurity. Raise your hand if you think you know what the most common password is. Password. password. <laughs> the most common password is password. And after password being the most common password, it's password with numbers behind it. Oh, wow. That doesn't make it a, a unique password. <laughs> it makes it just as easy to hack into. So with passwords, you want strong and unique passwords. You don't want to be using the same password four or five, six times or for literally every account that you own, because that's not a good practice, don't do that. Um, you also want to update these on a regular basis. It's recommended that you do this every three months. So <laughs> we definitely don't do that. We should, though. Um, so yeah. right. Yeah. Well, you're going to be chiseling for a really long time if that's the case. Um, so yeah, every three months, mark it on a calendar once a quarter, go through your passwords and make sure you're updating those on a regular basis. Also, use a password manager. A password manager doesn't always have to be an app. It can be pen and paper, it can be an Excel spreadsheet, your whatever you do, notebook, put it in a safe kind of thing. But you have to have some form of system to keep track of all of your usernames, all of your passwords, what they are, when it was last updated. So uh, for us, we, um, sorry, we use Dashlane for business. Um, there are some flyers over on the table where you walked in and got your name tags. So if you're interested in Dashlane, they have a free personal plan. Um, they also have paid plans that also include uh, VPNs, which are virtual private network. So if you ever go into a Starbucks or you go into a random cafe or you go into a Barnes and Noble and use their Wi-Fi, it's not secure. So VPNs will help you secure your connection so somebody doesn't break into your stuff. Um, Next is... And, and let me just say, sorry, if yeah. you, so if you adopt the use of Dashlane, we can sort of help you then, right? Because you're mm -hmm. using the same password manager software that we're using. And so that, that uh, gives you an additional line of support mm -hmm. uh, if you use that product. Kathy, you have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes. You want something that's long, 
they say 15 characters is probably like a really good length eight is what's recommended but the longer the harder it is to crack the more unique it is the better it's going to be so that's a great great comment um also on the password manager note here so like i said we use dashlane for business but you have built-in password managers on your phone so if you have an iphone you have a password manager built in android phones have the same thing i believe they do. uh google has a password manager yeah macs have a password manager so basically whatever one you use use it that's what's important. Apple Use it. calls it keychain, I think. I think so, yes. Yeah, keychain. Chain. So if you mm -hmm. see keychain, that's Apple's password. So there are a lot of mm -hmm. password managers that the major technology companies yeah. are producing. Dashlane uh, goes between all the different systems, mm -hmm. and uh, I pay a subscription fee annually for it, but I get the same Dashlane on my phone, on my mm -hmm. laptop, and so it, wherever I am, it knows my password and uh, makes it a, l a little bit easier to use. Right. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, and most password managers now are interconnected between all of your devices. So whatever password manager is on your phone, you can access it on your tablet or on your laptop. So if you're out and about, you can still get to it. Uh, next, you want to make sure you're turning on automatic updates on all your software and your operating systems. One of the easiest ways for hackers to get in is with software that's out of date. So I will leave it at that. Uh, think before you click. This has to deal with phishing emails because a scary statistic is that 90% of all successful cyber attacks start right here. They start with a phishing email. They start with an email that looks legitimate, like it's from UPS or the post office or you know some other business where you shop at. And you click on something because it's like, oh, well, I can click on this, it's just an ad. No. So if something looks suspicious, it probably is. <laughs> uh, so don't click on anything. Another way that you can tell if something looks legitimate, we'll use the UPS for example. So if you get an email from UPS, but you're not expecting any packages, you didn't order anything, what you can also do is check the email address where it's being sent from. And if it looks like it's not a UPS email address, it's spam and it's a phishing attempt. So what you do is just mark that as spam, report as junk, delete it. And then last thing is you'll want to turn on multi-factor authentication. Another word for this, um, which is interchanged, is two-factor authentication. It's used interchangeably, so if you s you'll most likely see both. Um, this can show up in really three main forms, and it's based off of something you know, something you have, and something that you are. So, for example, something you know would be a PIN number, your parents' maiden name, where you, what street you were born on, something like that. Something that you are would be your fingerprint, like fingerprint or face recognition. And then something you have would be a text message code, a email code, or, a, or if you're a little more tech savvy, they make authenticator apps that you can put on your phone and it will generally or it will generate a random code every 30 seconds. So those are those three really way, main ways that you see that. So when it comes to multi-factor authentication, you want to turn this on on every account that you have. You want to start with your email and most importantly your financial accounts. Um, that's why we strongly, strongly recommend that you turn it on on Fidelity.com to add an extra layer of protection to your accounts because nine times out of 10, if somebody's gonna hack into your accounts, that 10% of the time, that 1% that it's somebody from the outside could also be someone in your family. It could be somebody that you know that is trying to get access to your accounts when you don't want them to. So if you are aware that they're trying to get in, you're gonna get a text message about it. You're gonna get an email about it. They're, they may be calling you, something like that. So this just protects yourself going forward. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about is identity theft prevention. This is another big topic that I've gotten a lot of calls about this year. Um, so these are some main tips in addition to the slide before, which we were talking about passwords, talking about making sure your software is up to date, don't click on phishing emails, and turn on multi-factor authentication. Collect your mail every day. 
Uh, this may seem like a no-brainer or like a, really, Casey, I need to get my mail every day, but uh, identity theft or hacking or data breaches don't have to be technology-based. It can be as simple as somebody's walking down your street and they check your mailbox and they pull out documents from your mailbox that have personal information on them and they can steal your identity that way. So you'll want to get your mail out of your mailbox every single day. Next is to review your credit card and bank statements on a regular basis. This helps you check for unauthorized transactions and things that you did not know that, you were, that your money was being used on. So if you signed up for something unknowingly, then you will only know about it if you review your statements on a regular basis. Shred any documents that contain personal identifiable information before you dispose of them. So PII, personal identifiable information, can come in the form of your full name, your address, phone numbers, email address, social, date of birth, uh, passports, and one I'd like to include in this is your employer. Because everything is now digitized, LinkedIn exists, people could very easily Google you and figure out where you work. And that's where, and somebody who is trying to steal your identity could easily seek you out based on where you work. So if you're listed in a company directory publicly, then somebody would be able to find you. So shred everything, don't just throw stuff away. Uh, review your credit report every year. Uh, so this one, raise your hand if you know that you can receive your credit report for free each year from the, good, okay, that's a great sign. Uh, so you should be taking advantage of that. So each credit, all the three major credit reporting agencies give us access to one free credit report each year. So you can get up to three per year annually. Um, so and it's good that you review it just to make sure that the information that's being presented on your credit report is correct. Uh, if there are any errors, you want to report those. Just any, even if it's the most minute error, like, oh, they had my apartment number or my house number listed wrong and I didn't actually live there. You want to correct that. Um, if they are showing accounts that are like credit, credit accounts or loans that you opened that were paid off but are still showing as open, you want to report that. Um, this will also show you if any fraudulent activity has happened. So if somebody tried to open an account in your name or open a line of credit in your name, you're going to find out by looking on your credit report to see when it was opened. And if that was not you, then you can report it. But it's good to get in the habit of just reviewing that on an annual basis. So now you have the opportunity to get at least three of those each year. And you also want to opt out of pre-screen credit card offers. Um, this goes along with the first point, which is collecting your mail every day. Um, pre-screen credit card offers have personal information of yours on them. So if somebody were to just go up to your mailbox, take the mail out, and just be on their merry way, and there's a credit card offer in there, they could very easily open a credit card in your name. So make sure you opt out of those. Yeah. So you... So like the uh, do not call registry, you can uh, request to be opted out through the Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. Mm -hmm. So that's how you will opt out of pre-screen credit card offers. Because with uh, what most likely happens is companies will get sent a list of people who qualify for those types of credit card offers and they'll just send them out. So you can go directly to the FTC.gov and you can request that you be taken off that list. Yeah. We'll be talking about that in just a moment. Yeah. So the question was, can you just opt to freeze your credit? And we will get to that point in just a couple of things. So yeah, great question though. Um, wipe any electronics before you donate them. So this is a really important one too, because we carry our entire lives on our phones, on our tablets, on our computers. And if you are going to donate any electronics, you need to make sure that you move all of that personal data off of that device onto a separate hard drive that only you can get access to. And then make sure that you've wiped the system, the operating system is set to, def to default, or it's like brand new, like you were to just have taken it out of the box. You haven't even set it up yet. 
So you want to do that. That's super important, especially because we have more and more technology and more devices. Freezing your credit, here we go. Um, it is only recommended to freeze your credit if you have a breach occur and you have evidence that your identity has been stolen. The reason being is because if you freeze your credit, you cannot do any new lines of credit, no house mortgage, no car, no big major purchases because it will 100% decline you and deny you every single time. Um, and this also, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, in freezing your credit, it does also show up on your credit report if you have frozen it at any point in time. So uh, once you do freeze your credit, then you need to take steps to report identity theft with the FTC and then start making those or taking those steps to correct any wrongdoing or get things corrected. Um, this can take months in most cases if it's pretty major. So freezing your credit is more than likely a last resort. Uh, you wanna make sure you check all of these other things first. Yes, Kate. Um, is this like a permanent sure. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So the uh, I'll repeat for everybody on Zoom. Um, you can now, at least with updates and technology and you know systems and processes, that you can just freeze your credit temporarily to allow you to do major purchases or unfreeze, sorry, unfreeze it. Um, you can unfreeze it temporarily to allow for purchases to go through and then you can put a hold back on it. Uh, we do a very, a very similar process with Fidelity.com. So if you've ever contacted us and said, hey, um, my email, I think my email was hacked or I clicked on something suspicious, uh, we can put a basically an advisor hold or a restriction on your account to prevent any monies from leaving so that we have control over giving you some peace of mind. Okay. And then next we're gonna turn back to Leonard. Thank you, Casey. Absolutely. <laughs> now that we've scared the bejesus out of everybody. <laughs> are we, are we, we know we're running over. We're just got a couple more slides. Um, this is another thing under uh, evaluation. I brought it up before if people would like us to get into the bill paying business. Uh, let us know on the forum, I think before I ask, and people weren't that interested, but I think maybe five years ago is when I asked, and maybe, maybe that's changed. Um, sort of goes hand in hand with the tax preparation piece. Uh, th this would give us some ability to help you with kind of household budgeting because we would be able to, to, to have a closer relationship with the uh, income and expenses that you experience. Uh, but let us know because I. Uh, there are wealth management firms, my wife's saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> there are wealth management firms that it's kind of a concierge service, right? And there are wealth management firms that do this concierge service. Let us know on the form if that's of interest. Um, and then uh, I talked about the journal. I'm not going to mention it again. Um, one more thing here. We would like you to tell other people about us. A number of you in here have made referrals and we're in introductions and we're grateful for that. Uh, the SEC recently changed and updated rule 2064-1A1 and it has amended what previously was a fairly uh, restricted environment for our clients being able to talk about us. Um, and when I say talk about us, I mean make any mention of us to the public. Uh, and this is how we this is how we get business. We don't advertise, you know. We're not running stuff on NPR and uh, billboards. It's really you who know people. Um, but even with this, we're not asking you to speak to people you know. We're asking if you would be willing to say nice things only, right? <laughs> If you have not nice things to say, we give you an annual performance review and that would be the place to, 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 to put that. But if you have nice things to say, 
um, you can now do that. And um, we could film you, but we really don't think we're going to go in that direction, or at least not now. Uh, but just something written, and p you can do it either with your name or, or not with your name, right? Kath Catherine yeah. knows all about the rules here. Yeah, there'd be an option to say disclose your name or get a data picture, but if you would prefer to stay anonymous, you can. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> So you have an option to full do full disclosure of your name and, and everything, a photograph of yourself, or if you'd prefer to stay anonymous, you could do, you know, John L. or you know, just uh, yep. anonymous yep. as well. So that's also an option. Uh, it used to be online. Yes, yes it's on the website. We would put it uh, so we would display it on the website, uh, which is permitted, and we don't want you talking about performance of the portfolio because it's a highly sensitive and restricted area. We could do that, but then we have to get into all sorts of disclosures and performance things with the SEC and audits and all this. We're really just looking for experience-related uh, uh, comments. So not investment performance or specific advice, you know, uh, which would be like uh, you know, if we did some sort of maneuver for you or something, right? And um, we're going to show you an example of something, and I think the person who made this next testimonial might be in the room. I'm not going to say who it is, but this would be a good example of something that's kosher. Y'all can read through this. This came from our performance New service. Capital has been instrumental in helping me develop a solid financial plan. I value Leonard's business approach on how he runs his firm, the genuine concern for the clients and expertise. His expertise, he's assembled a top-notch team. JC is a total pro and has been invaluable to me. Love working with her. Catherine is top-notch. I like Casey, very responsive and attentive with follow-up. So that's something that is uh, um, something that we can put and that we can, we can publish. And... Um, Really, we would like to get a wall of this so that people who are coming to, to, to consider us for helping them, we think that'll be really a helpful thing for them to see these sorts of comments. And it is now permitted by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, so so what, what, are, what are we doing on, uh, oh, on the form. We're, we'll ask you on the form if that would be something that you would be interested in, in helping with. Yes, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I thought John had a question. Um, and, and, and this is something that faces all advisors. We were not allowed to, uh, to say anything about ourselves or, or not allowed to have, uh, let you say anything about us to the public until this change in the Securities and Exchange Commission rules. So it's there now, and this is the best thing we can say is your experience, if it's good, to, uh, uh, through, through, our, through our website. Okay, that's it. So uh, that brings us to any questions or comments. I can, I can take them. Um, uh, I'm sorry, we have a form, and the way you can get to the form is on your program. If you open and look on the inside cover, there is a link that you can type into your laptop or your phone, and there's a QR code where if you, if you know how to do a QR code, you basically act like you're going to take a picture of it, and it's a barcode, and then you, you follow that QR code prompt and it will take you to the form. And uh, we, we uh, as I say, it's, it's, uh, I can't make you do it, but I'm strongly uh, <laughs> requesting it. The form is made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in closing, and I think, uh, and, and if we could ask you also to evaluate any, any presentations um, as part of that form, uh, we would appreciate it. And then again, uh, the services that we've brought up today, if you would um, give an indication of things that are of interest to you. We don't want to spend any time on something th and waste our time if something's not of interest, but we're constantly trying to think of, of how can we uh, do it. Uh, thank you very, very much for joining us. And again, the same thing. We'd like you to go to uh, fill out this form. It's, it's the really uh, best way that we can get better at doing this conference, but not just the conference best way that we can improve it, what, uh, whatever we're doing, is to get your feedback on that. I want to say some closing thanks to some people. I want to thank Chris O'Malley very, very much. Chris um, is amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, he is constantly making sure that what's going on up here 
and not just up here. He's got to be sending all of our presentation out to those of you at home. Everybody, uh, I think, if there's an MVP of what we do in the conference, it's Chris O'Malley. <laughs> and so, uh, Chris, thank you. I want to thank Granite Properties, our, our landlord at the other building, and uh, they graciously let us use this room uh, for the really right price of zero. <laughs> <laughs> And that helps us keep our fees down to you. So we're thankful, <laughs> thankful to, to Granite. Um, let's see. I want to uh, thank a picnic. You know, they do a great job, and, and all the people who put together lunch there. I want to thank Casey very much for everything that you do every single day and the wonderful and scary presentation that you <laughs> gave us. You gave us today. And you're all going to go out and change your passwords. First thing this afternoon, okay, and then you're going to set your watches for every three months <laughs> thereafter. <laughs> JC, I want to thank everybody knows how closely JC and I work on really the core things that we do in investment management, financial planning, and uh, it's a pleasure to work with you. And, uh, and especially Catherine, who puts so much work into putting this conference together. She's the linchpin and pulls it all together. She has a spreadsheet. You may think, oh, you just put this together, Catherine and I sit in the conference room beginning in August or May, and she's got a spreadsheet that's, you know, 200 rows of individual items and tasks that have to get done, from big ones to, you know, the pens need to be out on the table and so on. And so it takes a tremendous amount of work to do that. So thank you so much as always. It's the ninth time. <laughs> and we will, uh, we will, we will look forward to seeing you next year. And again, if there are any questions or remarks, feel free to make them, and we'll stick around for a little bit too. Thank you so much for taking time to come today. We know it's a, it's a pretty good commitment to give us a few hours. We hope it's worth it.